Welcome to the first lesson in the Cryptography Essentials series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about hashing. Hashing, or hashing algorithms, are a mathematical formula that transform messages into a deterministic, fixed-length representation of the original string. For example, if we started with the word hello as our original message, and we ran that through a hashing algorithm, the result of a hashing algorithm would be called a digest, and this digest would be the representational string that represents the original message. A simple example of a hashing algorithm could be something like adding up the letter values of the original message. Here, we're adding the letter values of the word hello. H is the eighth letter of the alphabet, E is the fifth letter of the alphabet, L is the twelfth letter of the alphabet, and O is the fifteenth letter of the alphabet. If you add all those up, you end up with a digest of 52. Now, obviously, that's a fairly simplistic hashing algorithm. A real-world hashing algorithm is going to be a little bit more complex than that. If you want more details as to what goes into a real-world hashing algorithm, I've already created a video on the topic, and I'll link it down below. The purpose of a hashing algorithm is to determine if the original message has changed since it was last hashed. For example, if we change the word hello to the word cello, and we run it through the exact same hashing algorithm, well now, since we're adding a C, which is a letter value of 3, instead of the H, which was the letter value of 8, we're going to end up with a different value. In this case, 47. 47 is the digest which represents the word cello, and 52 is what represents the word hello. And we can easily tell that this message is different from this message by simply comparing the resulting digest. Since the digests are different, we know that the original messages must be different as well. Hashing is impossible to reverse, but it can be brute forced. What that means is if I give you the digest of 47, it's impossible for you to reverse engineer the calculation to end up back at the original message of cello. But if I know your message is only five characters, then it's easy for me to run through every single possible combination of adding up five character words. This would guarantee that I'd end up on 47 at some point, as well as discover a bunch of other messages that also add up to 47 as well. So even though hashing is impossible to reverse, keep in mind you can brute force a hash if you know a message is of a certain size. One of the other benefits of hashing is that it's very efficient, which is to say you can use this on messages of any size and as often as you need, which means it's efficient if you want to run a bunch of packets through a hashing algorithm to determine what the digests are going to be. You can totally do that with any modern CPU. That's what I mean by hashing is suitable for bulk data. So again, hashing is just a mathematical formula. And what you get when you feed something into a hashing algorithm, whether that be a message, whether that be data, files, or something like that, or whether that be packets or even portions of a packet, the result is going to be a digest, and you can use that digest to determine if the original whatever you hashed has changed since it was last hashed. And here are some common hashing algorithms you'll see. The most common ones are these over here in bold. These first two, MD5 and SHA, are considered legacy by the current world. Personally, I still use MD5 and SHA all the time to compare to see if two different files have changed. But if my goal is security, MD5 and SHA1 are not approved for security in the modern age. The most common hashing algorithm you'll see is SHA256. SHA256, as well as all of these, are all part of the SHA2 family. The SHA2 family is a single algorithm that can spit out a digest of 224, 256, 394, or 512 bits. The SHA-2 family was created by the U.S. government, and that fact has made some people suspicious. That's why the SHA-3 family exists. The SHA-3 family, however, was created by public contest, which means a bunch of cryptographers all created hashing algorithms and submitted them for approval to win the contest of what would be the new secure hashing algorithm of the future. And since that creation and approval process happened in public, the SHA-3 family is considered more secure and more trustworthy than the SHA-2 family. So in the future, you'll start seeing algorithms switch to the SHA-3 family. But for now, there's nothing insecure about the SHA-2 family. So that's our discussion of hashing and hashing algorithms. Now I want to show you a few examples. Here, I'm using the echo utility to send a string to a particular hashing algorithm. We're using three different hashing algorithms in this example. Each instance of the echo command includes the dash n argument. That prevents the echo command from adding a new line character at the end of the string. And since MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-256 are common protocols available to anyone, you can do this exact same operation and receive the exact same digest in each case. Just don't forget to use the dash n argument to prevent the newline character from being added to the string you're running through the hashing algorithm. Not only can you send strings to these hashing algorithms, you can also use them to hash files. 
Here, I'm using the SHA-1 utility, which is going to calculate the SHA-1 hash on every file in my current directory, which starts with the word file. In this particular instance, I have three files, file1, file2, and file3, and each of them have a different SHA-1 hash. So that's an example of how you can use hashing algorithms on the files on your computer. And that wraps up everything I wanted to talk to you about regarding hashing and hashing algorithms. In the next lesson, we're going to define keys and secret keys and show you how they're used and why in cryptography. But that's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.